In today's video, we'll be discussing artificial intelligence models that are able to generate code. Yes. Code. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? The last few years have seen companies and research labs pushing the limits of AI and what problems we can possibly solve using intelligent systems. All AI solutions currently fall under what we call narrow AI. Narrow AI can solve a few specific tasks very well but cannot perform at similar levels given a different set of tasks. Your AI-assisted Netflix recommendation system will absolutely break down on the highway if it was repurposed for self-driving. General AI on the other hand is the theory that AI in the future will get to a point where it's able to do several tasks, similar to a human. At that point, it would have reached human-level performance on all human tasks where it can learn to self-optimize and recode its parts to self-improve. The final tier of this AI trajectory is super AI. This is where things go berserk. AI would have fully surpassed human intelligence by an enormous margin because these systems will self-improve at an explosive rate. Observing this path, it is obvious to see that AI will have to learn to recode its functions in order to self-learn and self-improve at a fast rate. This brings us to the main part of this very interesting topic. Companies like DeepMind, OpenAI and Google, among others are spearheading codewriting tasks for AI systems. The goal is to instruct the AI system via natural human languages like English or French, to write code in any of the programming languages. This implementation is a big step in AI, because it opens up the software industry to many more people, especially non-coders. All you would have to do is to describe your requirements in your preferred spoken language and the AI system codes it for you. Codex from OpenAI is a prime example of AI code generation. It uses GPT-3, which is a pre-trained model for understanding instructions via natural language. This is then fine-tuned on GitHub code datasets. Now, before you think of closing this video because things just got too technical, let me explain what all that means. GitHub is a repository for open source code and serves as a good starting point for training a code generation model. Fine-tuning is just a method of using an existing model, for example, GPT-3 in this case, to train a new model on very specific data, like the GitHub dataset. If this still didn't make sense to you, then please leave your questions in the comments section below and I'll gladly answer them. For now, Codex is in its infancy and only able to generate very simple code with a few lines, but its potential is limitless. Another model worth talking about is PalmCoder. This model is built by Google and is a fine-tuned version of the Palm language model. PalmCoder has been shown to be great at tasks like code fixing during the software development stage. For example, it can be great for code verification and debugging, to ensure that your program is able to compile and run properly. Finally, AlphaCode from DeepMind is an AI model that is absolutely worth mentioning. This model is also trained on GitHub data and fine-tuned on CodeForces, which is a competitive programming platform. AlphaCode was tested on some programming contest data on the CodeForces website and it ranked among the top 54% of all participants. These coding tests involved some critical thinking, algorithms, logic, and natural language understanding. AlphaCode was the first AI model to reach human-level performance in coding competitions, and you can be rest assured that this is only the beginning. So, what does this all mean? Programming is a way by which we convert our human ideas into machine-executable programs. In the early stages of computing, these instructions were in the form of basic low-level assembly language that was directly tied to the machine architecture and was very intricate. Programming back then would have been created using punch cards or magnetic tapes containing the required set of instructions. Then came higher levels of programming languages that were more removed from the specific machine architecture and could be generalized across several machines. This enabled more people to start coding easily as you could write programs and transfer programs across different machines seamlessly. Over the years, there has been a shift towards making software more efficient and easily interoperable. 
The barrier for entry for software programming is relatively easier than the past, but still complex for the modern day. The intervention of AI for code writing will be an important next step in the evolution of computing. In order to make things easier, wouldn't it be better to communicate your ideas to a machine via natural language? In that way, almost everyone can create programs. What a world that would be, wouldn't it? I'm sure you're wondering, could I direct the AI model to program my website idea? The answer is yes, in the not so distant future. For now, the AI system is able to generate snippets of code and will definitely need human evaluators to assess them. Imagine you used an AI-enabled program for your e-commerce website, will you fully trust it without vetting the code first? Absolutely not. The need for human evaluation is key, especially in these early stages of AI code generation. A world, where you could easily spring your idea to life, by instructing the AI system on what to do, might not be fiction after all. Aside from code generation, there have been other forms of AI generation, most notably dull E for images which we'll cover soon in an upcoming video. We're barely scratching the surface with these kinds of implementation in artificial intelligence and in the next few years we're sure to see a rise in natural language to task technologies in active use. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something today. What would you use this kind of AI system for? Please leave your thoughts in the comments, I'd love to hear them. Until the next video, it's goodbye and thank you.